I think this was the bloodiest scream from a gallon to gallon standpoint of blood used. And I can say from experience, uh, the moniker of bloodiest scream holds up. <laughs> I played Chad Meeks Martin at Scream 6. Right after what happened in Scream 5, my character's been stabbed a plethora of times and is trying to leave that in the past and start a new life in college with his friends. Uh, in New York City, that's uh, Sam Carpenter, Tara Carpenter, and his sister, Mindy Meeks Martin. And we see how that falls apart in the wake of a new Ghostface uh, debacle. That is my family. We liken it to summer camp all the time because I feel like I was so uh, attached and appreciative of who they were. Uh, in 2020, when we filmed the first one, we went away for a while, and when we came back, we picked up right where we left off. The same jokes, the same fun time on and off set. Guys? The shoot was certainly different than the fifth one. I think you take what feels like a very homegrown sort of domestic terror of Woodsboro slash Wilmington, North Carolina, and you put it in a major metropolitan area like Montreal, i.e. New York, and things are bound to sort of uh, blow up in a few different ways. The scale, for one, was much higher which kind of uh, echoed the budget as well. We know how the fans responded to it, so we're just trying to meet that bar and then surpass it. Specifically for the subway, that production design and having a subway system recreated so authentically, especially as someone who went to school in New York, every last detail from the pieces of garbage and filth on the seats to the sounds that will play as the doors to the subway open. On the other side of the coin, the uh, Ghostface Museum was both exciting and kind of uh, terrifying that a space could feel so menacing just due to its architecture and layout, as well as the context in which the characters find it. And I think that's a part of world building and storytelling that I love to see in movies, where it doesn't necessarily go explained in detail in every piece, but that it's there and it lives so that the characters can discover it and the audience can as well if they pause and look through frame by frame. Do you have anyone that might want to target you? Not anyone who's still alive. This isn't like any other ghost face. As a Scream fan myself, I think it was uh, humbling to see something that I love so much get continued on in such a passionate way and then have that passion be reciprocated by a fan base that is so dedicated to the preservation of what they grew up on and what they love so much. I feel like it's allowed us in the sixth one to kind of stretch those limits and see how we can take the lore and mythos of what's came before and take it to new places. I was so touched to see people adopt uh, Shotgun Ghostface this time around as that's a weapon that he's not necessarily famous for. And yet, in the setting, the New York setting again, a lot of what Scream 6 is is an action movie wearing the mask of a horror movie, and it fit the tone, and luckily people agree, or at least hopefully, uh, they'll agree. They'll certainly let me know on Twitter. I didn't necessarily know that the quote-unquote core for dynamics is going to take on uh, the intimacy that it did, uh, so to speak, uh, nor did I think that I was uh, going to be as thrown off by the killer reveal as I was. People will see why when they watch the movie. It's not a nasty horror film. It is one that cares about its fans and has a certain level of empowerment in its main characters and final girl. I can say as a Scream fan myself, I was happy to see the care and dedication afforded to the story and the narrative in that respect. It followed me here. And it's gonna keep coming for us. <laughs> we share a certain history. I mean, I'm a big Hayden Penetter fan, so I geeked out appropriately because she was the voice of a character in a video game I loved very much growing up called Kingdom Hearts 2. She played Kyrie, and I told her that as if she didn't know, and her response was, I had a feeling you'd like uh, that game, and I was kind of anticipating you mentioning it. I don't know if anyone knows this, maybe because of her uh, petite stature, but she's a bad through and through. I think if anyone were to run into Ghostface and come out unscathed, it would be Hayden. I don't know whether that's she's had combat training or she just is tough on her own right, but I, I gotta say she has both a thick skin and um, a very powerful persona and mindset. You want me. So let's finish this.
I watched this, it's like an, I guess, independent film called Skinnamarink, and it was a movie that's two children stuck in a house that hates them, basically. And I guess there's a demonic presence going around. Needless to say, I watched it alone at 11 o'clock in the dark with my dog, and I think about it every day since.